Hello everybody, how are we doing today? Welcome to the Memorial, the Memorial Day Parade. At uh, this time the band's going to play a couple tunes and then we'll get on with the rest of the show. Thank you.
At this time, I'd like to introduce Chaplain George Schumacher. Thank you, Dave. At this time, we're going to have opening prayer. With hats off, hats bowed. Father, thank you for this beautiful day. This glorious people that are here on this Memorial Day. We must remember this day that the Lord has made. He will never leave us or forsake us. His hands are the living and the dead. We give you thanks for those of our comrades who have laid down their lives in the service of our country. May they rest in peace and may the light shine upon them. May we never fail to remember the awesome cost of freedom which we enjoy. We ask also that you will watch over the veterans of this land, inspiring them to serve you and their country in a new creative way. Comfort the ill and the wounded comrades who are hospitalized in homes. Relieve their suffering and pain. Restore them to the blessings of health again. And we pray for our soldiers lying here in this cemetery, the sacred hollow ground, their final resting place. They give their lives that this nation may live. In Jesus' precious name, amen. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Pastor James from the Free Methodist Church. We're going to remove our... Woo! That's louder than I thought. We're going to remove our hats one more time. We just prayed for our veterans. And so we're going to take this opportunity. We're going to pray for our country. We're going to pray for Memphis, our leaders, and ourselves, okay? So let's pray one more time. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day that we have before us. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you that it's not pouring down on our heads right now. Lord, we thank you for the town of Memphis, our slogan, a pleasant place to live. And right now, Lord, we surely feel that. We look around, we see so many friends and families here, Lord, that want to celebrate the memory of those that have gone before us, those that we have stories to share that have made an impact on our lives. And Lord, we specifically make a moment to remember those stories, to remember our families, to remember friendship. And Lord, we look around the world, we see things that scare us. We hear rhetoric on both sides of politics and all sides, Lord, that some we could agree with, some, Lord, that we really just don't care to hear. Lord, may we live above reproach as people. Lord, may we live above the standards that we want our leaders to have, that we, we may hold true to our integrity. Lord, may we pass stories on in family and values. Lord, it's not anyone else's job but ours. It begins here. It begins at home. Would you bless our leaders? Those are our school administrators that, Lord, hold so much weight, balancing so much pressure. So many expectations. May we offer the grace we would want if we were in their positions. May we all hold true, Lord, it says that a community raises a family. We live in a community, Lord, so may we look to the children around us and help install values in them. May we share stories with them. May we, we, may we learn from each other and hold each other up. And as times get better and times get worse, Lord, as the cycles go, May we not forget what you've done for us, which is why we pray. Thank you, Lord. May you bless the rest of this ceremony, bless the rest of the groups that are coming to this microphone and the band for their musical song. May we get excited about why we're here. May we get excited about life because life is precious. We ask this in your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Senator Sanborn.
Thank you, Commander. How wonderful it is to live in a small town like this. And Josh Ash, your band was fantastic this morning. Can't we acknowledge them? <laughs> I'm so fortunate to be joined by my wife. I'm glad we call this community part of our home. She's taught here for 23 years. Any of you kids in the band ever have Mrs. Sanborn? <laughs> <laughs> We are given the difficult task, but important task, as we gather here today. The task of memorializing those brave soldiers who Abraham Lincoln famously said, gave their last full measure of devotion to this nation. It was in the shadow of the Civil War that the tradition of honoring all who served this nation and performed the ultimate act of courage first began. We meet here today to continue the tradition of remembering and venerating these honorable dead, these brave men and women who helped grant our independence, protected our nation and its allies from foreign despots, and spread the most inalienable of all human rights, freedom throughout the world. Although no simple gesture or spoken words can fully repay them for their service and sacrifice, I do think that this is a day we must honor our fallen heroes as the embodiment of the greatness of our nation. This should be a respectful day for communities to join together in settings such as this, a day we remember the more than one million brave soldiers who have given their lives for the sake of our nation, our ideals, and our way of life. A day when we recognize that these brave souls, many of them young men and women who have never seen, who have seen only their small towns in many cases, which they have called home, before being placed in the theater of war. They made sacrifices that we can never fully com comprehend and never fully appreciate. It is more than just the one million soldiers who have made this ultimate sacrifice for our nation. It is the millions of families that have lost a son, a daughter, a brother, and a sister. Tens of thousands of people who have lost their true loves and thousands of children who have lost their parents. We must never pretend that these losses were easy, nor should we believe that they were in vain. It is their service and often their sacrifice that has made this nation not only the world's lone superpower, but also a beacon of hope and of freedom. It is an increasingly dark and dangerous world. We as Americans can, must never lose sight of the sacrifices that these men and women have made up until this very day. We must never forget the high price paid for our freedom and our way of life. Most of all, we must never forget the debt we owe to those that we gather to memorialize and their families and their struggle. In the Civil War, that was 750,000 soldiers that perished in a nation of only 35 million people at that time. Since that time, the numbers have continued to mount. World War I saw 126,000 American war dead. World War II resulted in over 292,000 American battle deaths, plus 115,000 from other causes. The Korean War cost the lives of over 54,000 American soldiers. Vietnam saw the loss of 58,000 American soldiers and the numbers continue to rise as we still have over 2,500 missing in action. Over 2,300 U.S. military deaths in the Afghan War 
almost 5,000 gone in the Iraq war. And in the Middle East today, we still have American losses that continue to mount. From these wars and other conflicts, please join me in a moment of silence to honor our American war dead. Thank you. May God bless and give comfort to the brave soldiers we honor today for they have seen the worst acts of mankind and have met them with the best qualities of man. May God bless you and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Senator Sanborn. I'd like to introduce Commander Greg Punk. I would like to read something our post adjutant wrote for all of us today. His name is Ted Sulowski. You probably all know him. He's an outstanding individual. Thank you for coming today to pay tribute to those who have served our country and are no longer with us. The memorial that is in front of us has the names of the people from Memphis that were killed in the wars. As you look around, there are many more flags at grave sites. These are the men and women that have served. Some are on the memorial, most are not. Each flag bears a unique story. There are two grave sites that I'd like to point out. In the northwest corner of the cemetery, you'll see a larger flag. This is a grave of John Myers. He lived from 1766 to 1848, and he fought in the Revolutionary War. He was 82 when he died. Towards the northeast part of the cemetery are the Denton brothers. The Civil War started in 1861. Ira Denton joined the Army in August of 1861. He died from wounds received at a battle of Fair Oaks on June 2, 1862. Robert Denton joined the Army in August of 1862 at the age of 21. He was captured and died of disease in Andersonville POW prison. He is buried at Arlington National Cemetery. William Denton joined the Army in the August of 1862 at the age of 22. He was taken prisoner at Buckland Mills, Virginia and died of disease in prison. Oliver Denton joined the Army in April of 1858 at the age of 18, and he died in 1998. There are just a few of the remarkable stories of the brave men and women. I hope you have time. I would like to read something about a soldier's viewpoint of being a soldier or compared to being a civilian. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me. According to the regulations and the Uniform Court of Military Justice, so help me God. Now as we see our fellow citizens arrive back from a foreign land, we should not forget those words that each of us and every soldier spoke upon enlistment. Because when we look upon a returning soldier from conflict, a disabled veteran, or a grave marker, those words should ring a bell in your conscience. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, streaming from the eyes of the returning soldier that I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey orders from the President of the United States. 
Remember those that gave their lives so that we may continue to live in freedom as spelled out in the Constitution of the United States and Declaration of Independence. Least we forget. Very touching and solemn words to remember as we head into the weekend, aren't they? Every Memorial Day, this Bible verse also comes to mind. John 15, 13. Greater love has no one that this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. As we stand at the Memorial Day service and the names are read of the boys and women that never returned home, and I hope we are able to remember that no matter what, we are all Americans, lucky to be in the land of the free that was paid for by the brave. Thank you for coming, and you're all invited to the American Legion Post 566 on Boardman for free hot dogs and drinks. And thanks for showing your support to this great community. Thank you, Commander. Great. Now the Memphis High School Band will play a couple songs for us. And once again, I'd like to introduce George Schumacher, chaplain. At this time, I'm gonna have a poem. Most of you have probably heard it, but it's something for us to think about. It is a veteran. It is a veteran, not a preacher, who gave us freedom of religion. It is a veteran, not a reporter, who gave us freedom of press. It is a veteran and not a poet 
who gave us freedom of speech. It is a veteran, not a campus organizer, who gave us the freedom of assembly. And it is a veteran and not a lawyer who gave us the right to a fair trial. It is a veteran and not a politician who has given us the right to vote. It is a veteran who salutes the flag, who serves under the flag, whose coffin is draped over the flag. This is the land of the free and home of the brave. At this time, we're going to have the laying of the reef. The auxiliary will bring the, the reef out. And she will place the reef. And as she's placing it, there's a reading of why that reef goes there. Carlene Gerlach. The reef is formed in the center of loving memories of those brave comrades who gave their lives in the service of the United States that liberty might endure. We were at a memorial this morning. But it was few, but if they was there. And I said, we're going to have the firing of the gun. We don't want a lot of people jumping. That didn't work. But at this time, we're going to have a Valley of 21 shot salute. And I don't want, I don't want to see too many jumping. Now at this time, we're going to have the 21 gun salute. I want to thank everyone for coming out on our busy schedule on a Monday. I do want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's not for us. It's for Memorial Day and the ones that we've lost. At this time, we'll have closing prayer. And as we have closing prayer, I finish. I hope that I see everyone up and having uh, refreshments at the American Legion Hall. Almighty God, we are hired to our fellow comrades, all who paid with their lives. They fought for freedom, and, and these cemeteries have become their resting place. The green sod that will mark their dwelling place. Oh God, we plead for renewal, strength, and power to preserve all of the armed forces who protect this great country every day. Lord, bring a lasting peace to the world so all can live in, in peace. Our service is now ended and we will bid farewell. There is a sadness in parting, but it should fill us with new hope for one day we shall see our comrades again. By God's mercy, we will return to the joy of his kingdom and let us comfort one another in faith and father be with the folks that love the the ones that's here today 
that's lost him in wars and other things. Father, you be with that family. And God bless them. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Everyone's dismissed.